time is 11 o'clock. You are listening to KPFK in Los Angeles. Coming up next, Marxist Commentary. Good morning. This is Dorothy Healy with Marxist Commentary. Well, I'm going to be doing, a, uh, in parts, an unusual show this morning, unusual for me, that is, in that while I am... We've jumped forward 25 years in time. That is filming. When the people in this film were young, they decided to dedicate their lives to a movement for a radically different society. In their middle years, that movement faltered. In various ways, they've gone on from there. But what remains of their dreams and ideals? On her radio show today, Dorothy's received a letter from a former communist. I'm a member of the broken-hearted generation, which also included my parents' generation. And there are thousands of us whose socialist aspirations turned out to be support for Russian nationalism, for bureaucracy, and for anti-Semitism, among other evils. Should I regret that so many productive years were spent supporting a cause that was not what I believed it to be and wanted it to be? Well, it seems to me that not only do we not have any regret, Nate, you and I and the other people of our generation, I know I have only an enormous amount of pride on what our generation did. We were part of the heart of humanity in our youth. We were reacting to and responding to and participating in the issues that helped to shape the history of our country. And as long as we did make, I think, that kind of dent, did we waste our lives, Nate? Well, I saw the Communist Party as the vehicle for getting rid of an insane, erratic, irrational, political, social, economic system and uh, bringing into, into existence a rational, humane, uh, humanistic society. Socialism. I still believe it. You know, I'm no longer a communist. I'm not ashamed of having been one, but uh, I believe in a democratic, humanist socialism. I hope to think that someday we will have socialism in America, but I think that it will have a big stamp on it that says made in the USA. Don't call me a former communist, call me a former party member, because I'm still a communist small c mm -hmm. in terms of wanting a cooperatively, communally controlled society where everybody has something to say about their life. You know, we're only on this planet a fleeting moment. As Sartre put it, uh, life is but a fleeting second, an absurd drop from the womb to the tomb. You should have something to say about that fall. Just as it's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved before, it's better to have struggled and lost than never to have struggled. I think the saddest thing are the people who are scared to struggle. You know the famous poem, Mourn Not the Dead? but rather mourn the apathetic throng, the cowed, the meek, the know the world's great anguish and its wrong, but dare not speak. So really, if you're gonna mourn, don't mourn for a fighter who made a mistake and lost, but mourn the suckers who never bothered putting up a fight. to tie him down for one solid day to, to show him the impressive desire of the people to uh, stop investing in big munitions and nuclear plants, you know? That's the main thing. Basically, it's to make the people aware of the danger that's confronting us so we don't do something about it. Wall Street is the central figure of finances where they invest in all the nuclear plants and all the places where they shouldn't do. Are you willing to go to jail with the rest of your buddies? Oh, yeah, of course. Why not? I've been in jail before. It's nothing big. Uh, now the jail's a little better, you know. <laughs> they give you a coffee ad, where in the olden days give you nothing. I'm talking with the olden days of
adopted it. What, what, what? You gotta have a better system somewhere along the line, right? None of these things ever come easy. You have to put up some kind of a beef. A scream, a holler, a scratch, or make some sound that you're alive that you could fight. You know, a cough or do something, you know. Otherwise, they just walk past you and look at you and he must be dead, he ain't moving, right? If I know I can do something about something, I do it. And I don't put it off. If there is a demonstration or if there is a, um, something that has to be done in a political sense, I really don't need anyone to tell me to do it. I do it. And that, hard. <laughs> I'm sure that that comes from the many years in the movement. And I like that feeling because I feel a part of the mainstream of life. And that's a good place to be at 60 years old. I want to tell you that the senior citizens, who are 10% of the population in our country, are 30% of the poor in our country. More than half of the senior citizens in our country live on Social Security as their sole or main source of income. The elderly who worked all their lives and helped build the wealth of this country are not asking for luxuries. What we are asking is to finish however many years we still have, to be adequately housed, adequately fed, and adequately clothed. This is what we consider a right and not a privilege. Do you know why I'm the little? I was put on this earth to make all the people who will come and say, oh, you're, there's somebody shorter than I am. And that makes them happy. And that's what my function in life is. <laughs> you know the, the term, he's 10 feet tall. I feel so sure of what I have to say. When I get up to speak, I feel like I'm a big, big person. And I don't know whether it's immodest or what. But I, that's the way. I never think of myself as being a little nothing. I think of myself as being a big something. <laughs> Let America be America again. Let it be the dream it used to be. Let it be the pioneer on the plain, seeking a home where he himself is free. America never was America to me. Let America be the dream that dreamers dreamed. Let it be that great strong land of love. Equality is in the air we breathe. There's never been equality for me, nor freedom in this homeland of the free. The millions on relief today, the millions who have nothing for our pay, for all the dreams we've dreamed, and all the songs we've sung, and all the hopes we've held, and all the flags we've hung. The millions who have nothing for our pay, except the dream we keep alive today. Oh, let America be America again. The land that never has been yet, and yet must be the land where every man is free. The land that's mine, the poor man's, Indians, Negroes, me, who made America, whose sweat and blood, whose faith and pain, whose hand at the foundry, whose plow in the rain, must bring back our mighty dream again. Oh yes, I say it plain, America never was America to me, and yet I swear this oath, America will be.